Right, there you go guys, so um, I'm going to carry on from where I was before, <laughs> doing more woodwork and playing around with that stuff, getting that, all that stuff apart, um, and then hopefully get some stuff sanded tomorrow, whatever, um, but yeah, um, so yeah, I'll get finished cleaning that stuff apart, basically I'm carrying on from the end of the last video, I just finished doing the... Um, the ending for the last one um so yeah i'm just going to carry on with what i was putting around with yesterday i'll bring you back when i've got some something that's decent to look at um i didn't really get a lot more so done it was just fluffing around stuff pulling freaking screws out and everything like was that little short clip just pulling all that stuff apart um so yeah carry on from that i'm just trying to decide once i get all that stuff sort of cleaned up and sorted um, I might clean up the edges of those front fenders a little bit, all those fenders, where I re-sprayed that, and then I might, yeah, it's sort of a hard thing. I want to start going through some of the smaller stuff, but I almost want to start putting it together to figure out what I need in the small stuff instead of cleaning a lot of stuff up that I don't need, because there is multiples of things here that I'm just not sure on yet, and as we put it together, we'll... Like, it's a pretty simple car, but, um, you know, like the brake linkages and all that sort of stuff, I've got that roughly sorted out and all that sort of stuff, so a lot of it's fairly simple and there's not a lot of complicated, like, it's not as though there's electric windows and this and that and frickin' everything else, but there is in a modern car. So it's fairly simple, but I just need to work out what's not to be, what's there and what's meant, not meant to be there. You know, by the time you get your fuel tank and your gearbox and all that sort of stuff and everything in there, a lot of it will come together and you'll soon work it out, but, um, there's lots of bits and pieces here and funny stuff that just, you know, you sort of wonder what it's for. Um, but by the time you sort of start piecing it together, you'll, you'll soon work out what's missing and what's not. And then you're, you're, you'll sort of work a lot of stuff out. Because I don't really know. I didn't pull the thing apart. If I'd pulled the thing apart, but it, it makes a hell of a difference if you can pull something apart yourself. Um, it's not kind of ideal because it costs a lot of money to pull a car apart. You know, it's a lot of time pulling it apart trying to get it broken down but if you can do it less than especially if you're making videos like I am um, it makes a hell of a difference to putting something back together because you can you've only got to look at a video or something like that or a photo or whatever and that stuff will come back to you to remember as long as it hasn't been a, a hugely long time but it's very difficult putting something together that you don't really know exactly you know you get a few good re visual references you know like the dash and you know, those sorts of things, but it's the hidden things that you don't really know that are meant to be there. That's the difficult piece, so. But, fortunately, it's a, it's a fairly simple vehicle. It's not like a modern vehicle, you know, where there's a, you know, freaking, you know, sometimes there can be 20 or 30 suspension components stock just in one end, you know, while for all the little bits and pieces where these things are fairly simple, you know, you get a leaf spring and a couple of hangers and a, some shocks if you're lucky if you know <laughs> um, so yeah it's pretty simple but yeah it's not like a modern some modern vehicles where there's a lot of little intricate pieces even in the doors but like these doors are simple there's no glass there's you know it's a door lock and a and a, and a handle and a couple of bits and pieces the only things like that you really do have to make is start working out the side curtains too at some point but i think i'm going to make them once I've got the vehicle back together and I've got the top back on it and everything like that, um, I'll finish that and stuff, get that up. The only thing I really have to do, and, and what I'll do is I'll just, I'll tape on the side of the car and everything off, and we've got to drill the holes down into the body, into the tops of the doors, for the um, curtains and stuff to go in. Um, I've got a roof, visual reference here, um, the one in here somewhere, so I've still got to do all that sort of thing, but I probably should have done it when we had the top door together, but because it's got no canvas and stuff on it, I need to sort of put it back out there in any way and just work it out. I've got, I know what I've roughly got to make. I've just got to go through and, and make it. Um, but yeah, I'll do that when we get a little bit more complete. I should, really should have thought about it and done it afterwards, but I think if we, if I, you know, cover 
the size of the car and take it out. Um, we should be fine, if you know what I mean. We're going for tape from two here over. I want to worry about this, this is all covered. Um, just the tape down here so it's, none of this is going to get damaged or scratched or whatever. And um, yeah, we should be okay. And it'll be down on the ground, not up at another half a foot. So it'll be down a wee bit lower. And obviously we'll just we'll have all the, all the weight of the rest of the car on it. So not there's a lot more on it, but you know what I mean. But yeah, I'll carry on doing what I was doing and we'll come back to you when we've got something done. Alrighty guys, so this is going to be one of the first things I actually try and clean up out of this stuff. Um, it's a little bit bent and twisted and whatever. Um, and obviously it's really dirty and shitty. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put in the blasting cap, but I'm going to swap the uh, grit out for some walnut. And just see if I can clean this up a little bit. Um, and then I might actually just warm it up with the gas torch. Because it's so old and brittle, um, just sort of like re anneal it because it'll be so old and hard and whatever from like it'll, it'll probably you know just come around with a little bit of tapping with the um what do you want to call it with you know with a, with a hammer and on a dolly or on a bit of wood or something like that but i think i might just give this a gentle warm up with the um gas torch and just get it hottish just to help re-soften the aluminium or the aluminium um, and make it so it's not quite so brittle if you know what I mean so I'm going to give it a clean up first with some walnut see if that cleans it up just so I can sort of see a bit more what I'm working with and then um, yeah then we might give it a gentle warm up just sit it on top of the anvil and give this a, a a nice warm up without obviously distorting it or melting it or anything like that and just soften it so it's not so age hardened and vib vibrated hardened if you know what I mean so it's not quite so brittle as it as it is now hopefully all right so just dump the grit I'm just going to get the egg gun and have a good blow around here and blow all the other shit out of here um, and then throw the bucket of walnut in there and um, have a play and just see if I can clean it up a little bit without you know obviously sanding and whatever and then we can we can polish it up and clean it up you know finish cleaning it up later once we've actually got it got some of the dints and marks and whatever else you know just try and bring it back so it's looks nice you know because I'm pretty sure it's fairly delicate so I'm going to have to remake some of these other pieces. Um, I just tried to straighten this one up here, but it was all bent and twisted and whatever. I've still got to improve it, obviously. But it's also been um, hammered on at some other point, and it's got a bow on it. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do there yet. I haven't quite figured that one out, but I've just been using the block. And this, ideally like a little wooden... Just a wee light wooden hammer or something like that would be quite good for this, but the block's a bit, it's not hard like steel, but it is, if you know what I mean, like that's a real hard wooden, bit of hardwood, but it's a bit more forgiving, and you're only using, you're not using much force at all, so we'll be doing something similar to that with that, but yeah, I'll have a bit of a play, we'll get this cleaned up, and that's what I'm looking for, use some ear gun from the gun and we'll have a bit of a blowout in here, oh, there it is, and um, we'll dump that walnut in there and give the um, freaking glass a clean up, and um, yeah, we'll give this a blast. Right, I'll turn the, uh, the back on and uh, see how we get on in there, got the walnut in there, so we can clean this up a little bit, make it a half decent.
All right, it kind of looks better than what it was. At least it's not covered in oxidisation and, well, not so bad anyway. At least I can sort of see now what's actually um, damaged and what's not. I actually thought that had been um, bent in or damaged, but it looks like it might be just factory sort of flat through there. But obviously that edge has been all bent up, so it needs all straightened out. And obviously needs all flattened off through there through there which needs all hammered and dollied whatever so i'm just going to give that a warm up um, with the gas torch just like i said that's i could probably just hammer on it but gently but um i just i'm a, I'm a wee bit afraid just just the sheer age of it and it is like aluminium or aluminum and it wouldn't be very high quality back then um well not likely to be really good high quality so I just want to just anneal it and help soften it take that age hardening out of it or we'll try anyway just to anneal it um, so basically just warm it up without getting it hot and without mounting it and distorting it so I'll do that and we'll come back to you right I'll show you how to um, anneal aluminium um, I've done this a long long time ago and I actually had to go and look up a uh, YouTube video to just to remember how to do it so I'll try and show you here so basically what you do is you light your acetylene torch and don't turn the um, oxygen on and you carbon this up and then you heat it up to it burns the carbon away if you make it another man um, so hopefully this works and I don't screw this up <laughs> especially on the camera mm. I'm yeah. not just don't think I've got another one but Use a dirty flame, obviously. Just, just basically, just sort it. Like that. So, when you heat it up, it's obviously with the oxygen on. When it burns away, you know it's done. It should be a meal. And be careful, obviously, don't get too hot, but apparently, this is the way to do it. Which makes perfect sense. And then you just let it cool. This stops it from being work hardened or age hardened, you know, from vibration going down the road, especially in something this age. Obviously, the thicker the aluminium, the more it would take to heat it up and burn it off, obviously. But you don't want to mount it or anything like that. You just want to Apparently just burn the carbon off, so that's the, the simplest way to do it. Good indication you, you know you haven't gone too hot or anything like that, I'm trying to guess, but it's a pretty simple way to do it. And then just let it cool down. And that should be a meal. And then, like, at least when I go to straighten this out, because if it was really hard, it would just break or crack or split or something like that when I try and straighten it or whatever. And I could do this, a, you know, several times if I need to, you know. If I really would need it to work something. Um, but yeah, that's that done. A meal. So, I'm um, yeah. I just, I couldn't remember how to do it, I sort of roughly remembered, but I just, I couldn't exactly remember, so I just watched a short video, just to remind myself of something I haven't done for freaking years, playing for stuff, but it just, you know, an old part like this, that is close to 100 years old, is going to be brittle from just vibrating down the road, 
you know what I mean? And this will just um, soften that metal back up so at least you can work it um, and it doesn't break or crack. You know, you might have to do this, if it was really bent up and twisted, you might have to do it three or four times, you know, so you don't break or split or crack the metal. Um, and then it just becomes, you've either got to try and tig it back together with stuff this old and I'd say, like, it's going to be a real... And this thing is going to be just an absolute pain in the ass. So, hopefully that gives me half a chance. I'll let that cool, and then I can play with it. Righty. So, I'm playing with this frickin' screws and this stupid frickin' board again, still. <laughs> Trying to get them out. These little bloody screws here. These are absolute mongrel things, they. No, not those ones. Where are they? See these funny little things? I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll focus on my hand. See that like the little slot actually in the centre? And it's still like solid around the outside. There's an absolute pig. They've glued themselves into the wood. They've got quite a... Come on. Got quite a coarse little bloody thread in there and they really bite in. Um, I'm having a bitch of a job trying to get them out because this is an aluminum, well, aluminum edge. Aluminium edge. Edging on this wood. Um, I don't want to pry it off and break it or whatever, but um, so I'm trying to um, get these out. I've been just actually just run over the backs and with a punch just to try and so I can break them free or whatever, or even just break the tops off them or something. So I've had to grind down a little screwdriver to even get into them. Um, something with enough, you know, can get enough purchase in there, but it's still not ideal because it's that's a funny little slot in there too, and because it's probably got a little bit of shit and rust and whatever in there. I run over them with that little wire wheel, just trying to gently clean the crap out. But the other cool thing is too, is I think, well, I've been offered a 42 Fargo chassis, which is very much like the, the early, well, sorry, late 30s um, Dodge Fargo trucks. Um, so I've been offered a chassis for one of them. And maybe some other bits and pieces too. I'm not sure about a cab yet or anything like that. But I've been offered a, um, a 42 Fargo chassis. I don't know whether it's got axles or whatever. But um, I'm not worried about the rear diff. But hopefully I can get a front axle. And then hopefully I can dump it on its ass somehow. Um, still got to work that out obviously when we get it. I want to channel the um, body and chop it. <laughs> do my first chopping channel um, so yeah I want to build something really cool ready, download um, and then with that 26, sorry 245 straight 6 Hemi um, I've got some ideas for that I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do for uh, carburation or whatever I had thought about maybe finding a, a mid 90s Ford which I'll probably rip the diff out of and use it on the thing um, but maybe pinching the EFI system off it, like I'm talking like 99 or something like that, and maybe pinch the front brakes off it if I can get them to work somehow. I'm not sure how I'll do that. Well, that'll just leave it, if I can get a decent set of drum brakes off something like that, it might be alright. Um, I'm not planning on going fucking 100 freaking miles an hour, I think, or maybe, but I, I wouldn't mind decent front brakes, but we'll see how we go. Um, biggest problem is if I do grab a diff out of one of those late 90s Fords, I'll have to put disc brakes in the front because they'll be disc brakes, they're all disc brake rear. Um, so you'll work that out of time, but maybe adapt something. If it's got, you know, the, the bolt on backing plates for the hub and everything, I might better make something and convert something and make something work if you know what I mean find a disc that'll fit on or something will work something out if you know what I mean um, it's amazing what you can make <laughs> um, it's not hard to make an adapter plate to hold a caliper it's just it's fitting the disc on um, especially if it's got a bolt on thing for a backing plate for for the drum and everything like that it's not hard to make a plate up that will hold a caliper onto something yeah, you can do anything you like you know, with a bit of decent freaking steel. Um, 
and make something up to hold a caliper in. Because like AU2 Ford um, front brakes or BA Falcon Ford front brakes are a really good conversion here for a lot of things. They're using a lot of that for earlier stuff in, a, in Australia. Their discs and their brakes are actually quite good. They're quite a good setup. Um, so yeah, that may be a conversion, but yeah, I'm quite looking forward to the um, making something. I want to make something for myself again and try and get one fucking finished. <laughs> it's been a bit of a battle the last few years. <laughs> I need to stop fucking running around the planet. <laughs> Even though I still want to go to freaking America. Um, <laughs> God, every freaking vehicle I've had in the last freaking 20 years. It just, it's been a battle to get finished. Just fucking life. I think the only thing I've ever really finished is what's been, um, what's been ute in, the long, in a long time, you know what I mean? Like for something for myself, <laughs> it is. it's been a bitch. But anyway, so yeah, that's some cool news. So that's a, hopefully another step towards the uh, project. Um, still, if I can't, I still like to go visit the museum down in their parts department um, because I know Dad worked there and he said this: they've got trucks galore, bodies and chassis and all sorts of stuff down there that I'm hoping I might better you know, sweet talk, maybe a cab and some doors and, and whatever. I don't care what condition it's in. Within reason, you know, like I'm happy to make freaking patch panels and whatever else and and I did think about may, maybe making something but I might just attack that a little bit further down the line. But um yeah, if I can at least get a something that's reasonable and do some repairs and but still have it ready. I'm gonna leave all the patina if it's got patina if you know what I mean. I'm gonna leave all the patina on it. The only thing I might do is if it's got any sign or anything on it, clean that off. Just lightly sand it off, whatever, and then make up something from my own shop and paint it on there like they would have done back in the you know thirties, forties, whatever. And do something like that. Sort of something sort of like this sort of writing but um, instead of M N put N Z M a lot of customs or something on it or something or I'll work something out at the time but it won't be like my logo, it'll be more this sort of style of thing maybe, you know, with the Mopar M in it. Something will work something out. And then I might put it on a T shirt. We'll see. <laughs> Once I've figured it out. <laughs> But yeah, I'll stop waffling. I'll keep freaking trying to get these stupid screws out of that. Should be cooled down now too. But I guess see somebody's sending me messages too, so I better go have a look. <laughs> right, I'm going to give up my screws. I'm just going to remake those other pieces, and probably that piece because I have to remake one anyway. Um, on this piece, these other pieces broken. Um, so this one was already broken off because um, it's like it's folded in an L and then double backed to create an edge for. One part of it, the other ones are just a straight out of L, and it's out of aluminium, so it's not going to be hard to replicate. Um, you know, I'll try and that might be just as easy because it's all bent and twisted. It might be just as easy to make some new stuff. So I, I need some better, thinner aluminium anyway to make the little trims for the back and the door openings because that stuff's just too thick. So if I can get a, a half reasonable size piece, I can make all these pieces out of it. But whenever we play with this and just flatten and straighten all this stuff out and uh, bend this back down, I think it's meant to be bent down, like the inside of this, if you know what I mean. So whenever we play with that and get that at least dollied up, I'm not sure if it's meant to be like that or not. I reckon it's bent. I'm going with B.
Right before I go for lunch, I'm being sanding this, and I was this here was damaged a little bit in here. Um, I've started sort of bending it back out and playing with it. It was sort of it was um, rolled round a tighter. It looked a bit funny. So I'm in the midst of trying to work out how I'm going to fix that. I started with made a little like a little pin to poke in there and try and bend it out. And I made it like a little wooden dowel basically to either jam in there or poke, you know, whatever, and sit over. And but I'm actually going to cut a uh, a couple of circles out of or a circle out of um, a bit of timber and sit on there and and slip it inside there and, and hopefully try and dolly it and shape it up and just so I can get this a bit smoother. But I've been sanding that back with uh, 220 at the moment just to try and clean it up and get rid of the hopefully the worst of the marks out of it. I don't I, I don't think I'm getting anything everything out because I'll end up with it too thin. But at least if I can get it really cleaned up and and whatever. I don't sure if, not sure if it should be polished or not, but we'll uh, we'll keep sanding. I'll sand it down to 400 or even 600 wet and dry and see what it looks like. And you know if we'll, if we think we want to polish it up from there, I'll, we'll polish it up. But I don't think it really probably needs to be polished. But if I think if it's just really cleaned up with even just 600 wet and dry, um, and then just keep it like that, I think it will look quite nice. I think it would probably would have been like that, like just a really nice clean, um, like a sanded polish, not so much a polished polished, if you know what I mean. But I don't know. We'll see how we get on. But I'm going to go some lunch, some fish and salads anyway, maybe some chips. I don't know. Righty, guys. So back here. Um, I'm going to start making that piece for that aluminium thing to re help reshape the of this so I'm gonna cut a, a ring of wood out and hopefully don't break it just trying to make that a little bit tidier in there but while I was at lunch I was watching um, Brent from half Ass work on his 37 Ford um, and I could see he desperately needed post dollies <laughs> which is something I need too um, I know Arco's got a whole crap load of stuff that he's built and made and whatever I got the anvil but um they got a hole in it. I think there's a hole in there's a hole in here too. And obviously the round the round rod in there for bending stuff. But that's something I why I want to have a forge because then I can make some post or some pegs to put on some post dollies to put some shit on top to uh, make some things because I think that'd be perfect in here. You now you can make something you can just slip in here, make half a you know a dozen or twenty or a hundred. Thing you can slip in there with different ends on them um, be really freaking handy especially if you're doing um, metal shaping and all that sort of stuff so that's part of the reason why I want to make a forge so I can make stuff like that you know use the, the forge to make the, the bits to go on out of some bits of bar and whatever else obviously they'll be tapered and whatever so um, so basically just get the metal hot and just ram it in there I guess you know once you get it close you can just beat it in there and then pull it out and whatever and um but anyway I'm gonna get cut and see if I can get this uh hole saw in here and cut a, a ring of wood out of this it's just um pine I'm not gonna try and cut it out of hardwood um I could but I want something with a little bit of depth that I can poke up in there and whatever and it's probably not gonna be deep enough either but at least I've got to set it up on maybe something else and Get it up in there and just try and reform that top of that piece a little bit. And then, um, yeah, keep making stuff, cleaning stuff up. It's amazing how long it takes to clean little bits like that up. You know, like you can spend a couple of hours just cleaning up, sanding it, and trying to get rid of all the marks out of it, you know. That's what people don't realise. That's where the time and the money goes, you know. You can spend, you know, just freaking hours and hours and hours just cleaning all those little parts up and prepping them to put back in a car you know it's bad enough the body work and paint work and all that stuff but it's all the detail work that's what people you know unless it's a, like i said like a moderner car and the pieces if you can find decent pieces that aren't beaten to, to, to crap now if something's a little bit more common and there's a few parts around you can find those pieces and collect them and buy them and whatever but that still costs you money too so it's either do you 
pay somebody to, hours and hours and hours to fix it, or do you go find a piece you know that you can maybe better pick up for reasonable money? You know, it's a real hard thing. But when you're doing rear rear stuff, that there's not so many around, or that just the parts aren't around anymore. You know, or they all look like they're all just beaten to snot, and you got to try and make them. Well, yeah, it just the money just runs away, eh? But anyway, I'll make this bit and stop waffling. Well, that didn't work. It's going to be too small to get up in there. Well, how I sort of wanted. I thought it was going to end up a little bit bigger, but it's not really. Because I wanted to sit it up on underneath there and just use the hammer. So I'll just. I think I'll just carry on with how it is. It didn't take me too long to put the muck around cut there. We'll just keep working at it. I think with my little peg here and just see if I can clean it up a little bit better. Maybe just file it or something. Just to blend it out a little bit and see if I can just get that edge a little nicer or something. And just polish it up. Right, morning guys, Saturday morning. Um, I'm getting a little frustrated with this car. Light, stop flickering phone. Right, I'll lock your light settings. <laughs> um, I'm getting a little bit frustrated because I thought I might have this painted a wee while ago, but just hold ups with different bits and pieces and you know, I had to wait on things and couldn't quite get things done or some of these things are taking a little bit longer to get sorted out than what I thought. Anyway, I'm going to get this um, the piece in the back of here done. Um, I haven't got all the products that I want to put on there and get them all on there in one hit, but I'm sick of screwing around with it. I'm not probably not going to get the texture coat and stuff until probably Tuesday, maybe, and then I'll, I'll probably, I probably probably won't be able to use them until maybe Wednesday, um, unless I get a chance. You know, sort of last. Thing if I get it early enough. But anyway, I'm going to spray this rust converter stuff on here, which is a CRC product. I'm not sure if it's made anywhere else. It's, this is made in here in New Zealand, but I've seen it in Australia, and it's not to say that it's made in other places as well, but this is manufactured here anyway. Um, so I'm going to use this old thing to put it through so I'm not putting it through my good guns if you know what I mean. It's water your water clean out so it's no biggie if you're not having to get anything special to clean it out with. But anyway, I'm gonna get in there and get this rust shit neutralized and sealed up and whatever. Um, and then yeah I don't know Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. We'll get the texture cut in there. So at least when I start painting whether I put gloss black or semi-gloss black or just blow a coat or something in there to seal it once we've got all the different products on there we get that done i want to try and get this start blocking some of the stuff back so i can get some freaking even some i put some blue and around the jams and stuff um so i don't have to worry about that crap later on um but i'm probably gonna have to wait for primer anyway because i need to spray the inside of the cowl and lots of stuff with a, a coat or whatever um, so I can get some colour in there because yeah I'll probably put a cup like a couple of coat light coats in there with, with the blue and obviously whatever with the jams and stuff like that and then we'll leave that cure off for a day or whatever close the doors probably just probably back mask this edge of guess and then close the door so it's not blowing back in around. Um, yeah, probably just, just put some back mask to edge for openings. So I close it, it's not blowing right in there. So I don't get crap loads of overspray that will work something out. Um, yeah, and then mask the rest of the body off and whatever. Um, but yeah, I just want to get, I want to get some paint. 
starting to, it's starting to get to me, to be honest. Um, I was hoping I was going to be further ahead. Um, the aluminium parts um, for the floor, that front floor section, I think I'm going to have to replace a lot of those edging little pieces. The, that big main panel and the piece I was cleaning out around the gear lever and sanding the crap out of it yesterday, trying to get it to a decent finish with all the marks and scratches that are in it. Um, doesn't look too bad. Um, I think I'll end up wet sanding it with uh, 600. I'll go grab it. Hold yeah, so the, that main floor piece that you, that you know of and um, whatever, like there's a few other bits and pieces that aren't actually on there, the wooden parts. Um, that main piece and this piece, which I've wet sanded with 600, it needs a bit of a polish. It's still got a few marks in it, but they're quite, quite some deep gouges. You know what I mean? I might try and maybe get this back a little bit further. You can sort of see it's got, um, like still a few of the marks in it. I could probably go a little bit further on it. But I'm half tempted to um, buff it up some jewellers rouge and just see what it looks like when it's really cleaned up. Um, but all the other edging little pieces and bits and pieces, I think I'm just going to remake them because I'm struggling to get the screws out for one. Um, those shitty little screws are just, some of them are jammed in there. And I'm ending up, because I've already had to try to drill the heads off them and whatever because I, some of them I just can't get into, they're that hard in and they're that rusted in, I've even hammered the back of them with a punch and whatever to try to get them to screw out and they just won't budge um, so I think I'm going to end up just remaking all those little pieces they're pretty simple, they're all, most of them are just L bends anyway so it's, it's no biggie to remake them um, and I need to get some a better gauge um, sheet to do those little back pieces for the bottoms of the doors. So the stuff they got me was just too thick. It needs to be about the same thickness as, the, as the, just the panel steel I'm using, or a little bit thinner. Um, I'm thinking like 0.9 or 1 mil or somewhere around about there um, for the thickness of the aluminium to do make that. That's about what that stuff is anyway. It just He got me 1.6, which I think 16 gauge. It's just quite heavy. It needs to be something like, I don't know, like 18 or 20, if you know what I mean. Um, probably 20. Just a wee bit, something a bit lighter, a wee bit easier to work with. And if you want to do a, do a hard fold over and fold it flat, like a, do a complete 180 on itself, which I have to do with a couple of little pieces, it's manageable. Um, whereas if I was using, like especially on that little um, finger, brake bender, whatever you want to call it, fold it, um, because it's not a um, hydraulic clamp like I used to work with with the big massive folders that were like 30 fucking feet long, um, well not quite that, 20 something feet long, um, it was all hydraulic so if you just, if you bent a piece over, well say it's that, and you bent the piece up over like past 90 and then pulled it out and sat it back underneath the jaw, you can just hydraulic and clamp it and just squash it flat. Whereas that with the little hand things, it's never going to do it. So you've either got to manually do it, but when you've got it hard bent over and bend it down flat and then carry on. So with it's 1.6 mil thick, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a thing to get a nice finish on, if you know what I mean. Whereas if it's about 1.9 or 1 mil, which is, I'm guessing about 20 gauge or thereabouts, um, it's, it'll be a lot easier to work with and I can still end up with a really good result because um, there's a, two little pieces that have got a, a double over and then the kick um, so yeah, I, I can still replicate that but it's just a wee bit easier to squash <laughs> um, and it's still going to be durable enough so yeah so I'm going to get that chip sprayed in there I'm going to get it a, another couple of blows out with the air compressor Bit of dirt and shit and crap out of there, flick some of that crap on and um, get that done. Then I'm going to, I want to send the front fenders. I was going to leave them until Monday, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it because I'm getting frustrated. Um, get those, those two fenders sanded back in the edges and just lightly rub the rest of them back with the overspray. Um, 
I might leave the other panels, the side balances and stuff, and then I might, I might start block sanding this body and see if I can get the runs off it. Um, just I want to get this freaking thing in some prime runs, in some colour. And if I get it done before sort of Monday, Tuesday, at least then I can try and get this other stuff done. Hopefully Tuesday or Wednesday, late Tuesday or Wednesday, and then as long as everything else looks good, um, I can get some bloody colour on the bloody thing. Um, at least in around the jams and in the cowl and all those sorts of bits and pieces, you know what I mean? In the, inside the cowl, inside the jams, um, and wherever else needs it that you don't want to be respraying. Um, and then I can let that cure off and I can mask up like the holes in the firewall and you know blank all that shit of shit off so it can't come back through and like in here like block that off so you're not getting over spray not that it really matters too much on the inside of here but just so you're not getting that over spray in and it's also not blown back out so I'll end up taking the, the top of the body off and put some plastic over it so it's you know you're not getting that shit back in there because I'll probably Give this a couple of light coats when I do the insides of the jams with just some blue. I'll just give it a light rub back and we'll paint it blue and then they'll end up covering it with something anyway. Um, so yeah. I'll get to it. <laughs> so that's 10 minutes. Alrighty, so this is like barely, I don't know, what are we, five minutes, ten minutes, if that, um, after I sprayed the stuff on, so you can see that it's definitely working, everything's going black, um, and it'll eventually, because you can see it's still white, milky, white, whatever, the stuff that's obviously not affecting any rust or stopping any rust, so I've done all the, um, obviously all these metal pieces too, um, so yeah, did I, all the brackets I made. All the rest of them are all painted and been done anyway with the other stuff, so. But that stuff is quite good, but, yeah, you've got to be careful with, if you happen to be using it on the outside of something, that is going to be, you know, like a, a car or something like that. Um, it, it's a, it's funny stuff. You, you've got to be careful because um, it will... The stuff that you put over it, if it's not put on soon enough, or if it's on the outside, um, doesn't stick very well. I'm not worried about it on the inside, if you know what I mean, because it's going to be covered up and whatever. And the likelihood of it coming off or whatever is, is slim, but I have had, um, you know, primer and that flake off it. If when I had, had done it, a few patch repairs on, on the outside and just used this to neutralise some rust that was around it and yeah, like it said, it was paintable over top and whatever, but yeah, it, it, it just didn't stick, you know, because I left it too long, so, but anyway, um, I'll carry on and I'll let this cure up and leave it alone and yeah, we'll do something else, but that was quick and easy, now it's done. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so I've been wet sanding this back. I want to sand it like a little bit further. I've just been doing it obviously wet, wet, um, wet and dry, obviously. Sandpaper, wet sandpaper, wet sanding. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I want to get a little bit more off it. Try and get this down to maybe some of the black that's on there. At least get it showing through a little bit more than what it is. So at least I know it's down far enough that we've filled the little imperfections that were there. That I wasn't 100% happy with in the texture. Um, on the edges of these two, I haven't started that one yet, but um, 
So what my plans are, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna really change what I'm doing, but I'm gonna alter what I'm doing a little bit for these videos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and maybe put up sort of main, two main videos a week on actually working on the car. And then I'm gonna try and put up maybe one or two how-to videos or tip videos or videos you know on tools or gear you should be using or something like that um, i've actually just finished doing well finished recording a uh, a mask a spray respirator mask video just tips how to's what to look for um you know when i uh, think questions to ask when you're buying all those sorts of things because obviously it's quite critical when you're special when you're spraying to paint paint and or whatever you know the stuff's not good for you so you know just a few tips and tricks things i know learnt um and just questions to ask especially obviously if you're using different brands um so that's sort of the things i'm going to try and do a little bit more regularly throw a few more how to's in amongst the mix instead of having um unless we you know get to a sort of new car and there's a bit more going on and then it might go swing a bit a bit a bit back the other way oh, i'll turn the camera around it might swing back a bit the other way um when we maybe get into another vehicle or i get into some of the other bits and pieces i'm cleaning up and repairing and whatever before we get finished on this thing completely um but i'm going to try and keep it down so because i know sometimes in a day i might do quite a bit of footage and sort of maybe ram it into one video that might be still quite long and throw it up especially if i've done a bit of bit of work but i'm going to try and keep it back to maybe one or two videos a week on the actual vehicles um so i might drop sort of one on sort of my saturday morning yours guys midday friday and then maybe you know another one of the other ones like earlier like a sort of my Tuesday, Wednesday sort of type thing, you know, with a bit of footage from over the weekend and Monday sort of type sort of thing. But throw, yeah, like a few how-tos and and whatever, you know, just even if it's on a product or some tools or whatever, you know, just something that's good, useful knowledge that people mightn't quite know or things I've learnt um, or new, even new tips and tricks that I come across, um, you know, things like that. Um, you know, and just things to look out for and, and whatever, you know, just try and do little separate videos on that. So get away from, you know, sort of the half an hour to an hour sort of type length videos, keep it back to, you know, sort of maximum sort of 20 minutes sort of type thing or thereabouts, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes-ish. You know, not too short, maybe the odd short one if it's a fairly simple video, but Sometimes when they might be a little bit involved with talking about things and there's a bit a wee bit involved in it, yet they might be a little bit longer sort of type thing. But I'm gonna go have some lunch and I come back and do some more sanding and um, try and get the stuff at least prepped up for Monday or Tuesday to paint some colour at least on these fenders and get some texture coat in the back of the body and underneath these fenders and you know try and get myself ahead a bit. I was going to hold off to sand to these stuff till Monday, but screw it. I'm, I'm getting anxious. I want to get this thing done so I can start putting this thing back together and get rid of some mess out of here. It's getting to me. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you later on. How are you going, guys? So um, I've got these both these fenders rubbed back on the edges. Um, I'm about to start rubbing back the body. Um, with I'll start with 240 because it's got those those fine runs in it. Um, now one thing when I was at actually at home, um, I'm gonna run over this briefly, this is a viscosity cup. If you don't know what that is, what, it's, what it is for is like your top coat or your clear coat, um, especially if you're not familiar with painting, um, you know, you're just learning sort of type sort of thing. You know, um, what it's for is when you mix your, your color, you know, your base or your um, clear, um, on most cans, or if you get the technical data, um, I was actually just looking for the paint for this and I haven't got it, but there's a viscosity thing there for for a cup. I assume these are all the same size, I don't know. 
um, but I'm assuming. So I watched this a video on the gunman there three or four years ago and I thought, shit, I'll grab one of them. Um, it might come in handy one day if I happen to be doing a, a really nice high-end paint job and I want to get try and get that paint to flow out better than than I would normally, if you know what I mean. Um, or just to try and get the paint better, flow out better. So what this does is you'd fill this cup up and you'd have a little timer and when you let your finger go, you'd count the amount of seconds it takes to run out and stop and um, that's your viscosity in it. And obviously on the paint cans, I have seen it on the paint cans, but it's not on these, unfortunately. Um, it will say, you know, it might take, I don't know, say ballpark, it might take 20 to 22 seconds for running in that cup. Um, and if it's within that ballpark, um, you got your mix right. And obviously, depending on your temperature of your day, um, that will change the viscosity. So yeah, if you mix your paint up by the thing and you think, oh, it's a little bit cooler today, you know, I'll check that and it takes, say, 30 seconds or out, well, shit, you know, right, I've got to put a bit more reducer in there to get the flow rate right. So when you go to spray, you don't end up with real heavy orange peel or it's just an absolute pig to spray and you've got to stop and you've got to mix it up again. And same with, you know, your clear coat, you know, because some of them are really, really thick, um, you know, and you might have, I don't know, like I've done it before years ago um, when I painted it. my holding newt the first time um, and wasn't happy with it, you know, 12 months down the later because it had some rust bubbling out in places because we didn't strip it right back. That's when I learned just frickin' strip a car back. Um, I, I'd sort of done it off and on with other jobs, but, you know, I sort of always thought, you know, just, oh, just rub it back and blow it over top, you know, just fix what it needed to do. But it bit me in the ass because I had to repaint it again 12 months later, I think it was roughly. But we went to put the clear on it, misread the can um, at that time. You know, I can't remember whether we, whether we just didn't, you know, I don't think we, you know, we didn't have it thin enough because we went to fill the paint gun up, went to pull the trigger to uh, just to test the spray, obviously, and it went and it leaned out like spider webs, and it went all over the car and shit like that, and went, ah, oh, fuck, you know, what do we, now what do we do? <laughs> you know, we were pretty green at that point, um, like I'm talking 2002-ish sort of type thing, and bought this whole new, cleaned it up, rubbed it back, because it was like, really, the paint was like, it had been, I can't remember what colour it had been, but it had been painted like a, a dark blue, and it was like really thin, like it had like two thin coats on it, just to cover it up, but it, you could see through it, if you know what I mean, like it was patchy. Um, so I rubbed back, painted it, whatever, you know, tried to clean it up, tidy it up, and then ended up doing it again 12 months later, because we had to strip it right back. But um, yeah, if we had this viscosity a couple of time, we could have tested that, checked the thickness, and oh shit, you know, that took 35 seconds right there. It's meant to be 22, or thereabouts. Um, you now we're, we've got something wrong here, we better have another read, you know, and mix the paint properly. Um, so if you're learning the spray and you're worried about like primers and stuff, you now you want that to flow right too, but it's not quite so critical. You know, you're gonna sand it back, you're gonna block it back, you're gonna do whatever. But your top coats and your clear coats, you know, that can get really, really expensive if you freaking screw it up. Especially if you get a, you know, you freaking sprayed it on, you think, oh my god, that looks like absolute dog balls. I couldn't get it to do anything right, you know. And then you're chasing your tail and chasing your tail. You're putting more reducer in it, you're doing this and doing that, and you just couldn't get anything to flow right. And maybe if you had one of these for a start off, um, you might have, might have saved yourself a lot of trouble, if you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, that's maybe something to look for if you haven't never heard of one. Is a vis viscosity cup. And Google on YouTube and it'll just, it'll go through it a bit more and the gunman, that's where I picked it up from, uh, I don't know, about 2017, I'd never heard of one before either. But anyway, I'm going to get sand in this bloody thing, see if I can get some, some of the runs and shit out of it and just block it back and hopefully I don't break through to uh, steel or anything anywhere and then I can maybe give it another rub back with some 400 back around it. Um, Monday or something like that, you know what I mean? Um, so I, I can hopefully, I'm hoping Wednesday, yeah, if I can get some frickin' 
at least get the jams done in the firewall and the inside of that um, cowl and you know, in behind that seat and shit like that done, you know, and get some um, texture coat and the insides of these and the wheel arches and stuff like that that I'm going to be painting very, very shortly. You know, I'm, that's where I'd like to be able to start trying to do Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday, the latest, hopefully. And um, you try and get some freaking paint in this thing because it's just, it's get to me. It really is. I want to make some progress and start at least bolting the fenders and the rear fenders on anyway. Um, I'm not going to worry about the front stuff until we dig into the motor and double check that. Because once we get it painted and uh, assemble a bit of that stuff, then we'll start putting the, we'll go through that trans or I've had it open, had a good look at it. it looks okay. We'll go through, we'll strip it down. Because then I'll better have a clean up once I've freaking get some of the stuff out of the road a bit. Um, strip it down, check the bearings, see if we can get bearings to put on it, and reassemble it, and then we can start you know, getting that sort of stuff in the car. Double check that motor and pull the head off it. It's been done, but a long time ago, if you've missed the earlier videos, um, like 10, 15 years ago, it was done. Dad helped do it. Um, so you just want to pull the head off it, make sure there's no rust or anything down in the bores, that the rings aren't stuck in the pistons. It's free, it turns over. Um, but just make sure nothing stupid's going on. I put ATF down the bores there ages ago. Um, I wish I should give another turn out just to make sure, but I put some ATF and that's all sorts of other shit down the bores here a while ago, um, just to make sure that had some lubrication around there just to maybe loosen anything up that needed to loosen up and just check out the stuff and it hasn't had never had all the, the nuts on the head um, so obviously we need to sort that and then we can give it a rip out to obviously give it another coat of paint and make it look better again um, and then get the motor and the transmission obviously got to get the clutch sorted and all that sort of stuff but you know we can get that sorted and get that in and then we can start assembling the front panel work and all those sorts of things. So, yeah, I'll get seen it. Righty, so I'm about done. Um, I've got sort of done what I wanted to get done, um, which is rub the runs off this thing. Um, I'm going to go back around. I've got a couple of spots I've got to do. But I'm going to try and go background most with with uh, 400 and then I'm going to have to, um, when we get some more prime, I'm going to have to blow some edges and bits and pieces. Um, and, you know, put another couple passes on some spots. Of them. It's actually giving me a, an opportunity to pick up a few more bits and pieces that, you know, that I haven't quite caught. Um, but the rest of it is looking pretty good. It's blocking out pretty nice. Um, Actually, I need to come back around here with a little small hand block again because you got this in the road. Frickin' it's awkward. I forgot to do that other side, but I've got most of it done. Um, so yeah, like it in theory, it should be a little bit better, a little bit flatter. And also, when we go around with 400, um, it should be even better again. Um, you know, and it's going to give me the opportunity to pick up an extra couple of pieces. Um, you know, that I've possibly, you know, that. I haven't quite picked up in earlier runs. You know, you you can guarantee it every time you block back a car again and again and again. Um, you know, you're going to pick something else up and something else up. You know, it, it is what it is. And especially when you're doing it by yourself. Um, you know, if you're two or three guys blocking the black, you know, you're not concentrating on the whole thing. Concentrating on smaller areas at a time. You know, and you probably pick up a few more things because you're not trying to get around the whole thing, if you know what I mean. Um, but I'm happy I've sort of um, on some back to where I should be but yeah I'm a, I'm a step closer again I'm going to make that the end of this video it's about pissed down and fucking blow its ass up by the sounds of it so thanks for watching again um, please like share subscribe if you're getting this far through my videos you know these hour long videos um, yeah much appreciate all the new subs um, 
if you're I might just give a shout out to a, a, a couple of smaller channels um, Wooden Metal Garage go over and watch him um, I'll post it he's actually in the last one he was one of the ones that commented with the little quiz um, and Slow Shop and Custom Arco's been telling me to go watch them for a while they're over in Sweden um, a lot of time it's in whatever their language is but a lot of times it's the guys talking in English too so um, and explain what's going on but so we've got some really cool old school stuff um, this sort of era but hot rods and all sorts of things um, I haven't watched many videos yet but I'm getting into it and again the uh, what they call themselves the Pariora I need to write it down hold on I've got it written down here <laughs> let's give these boys another shout out the boys up in North Island here um, no, they're a bit like me, but they're about 400 odd subs, you know, pushing towards 500. There used to be a bit of paper where I was freaking writing shit down the other day. Maybe typical. <laughs> you never find it when you freaking want it. Um, oh. Thank God for everything, eh? And take all the pauses out. <laughs> Yeah, as much as I like to try and keep it raw, <laughs> it's not always easy. <laughs> what do they call themselves? The old Pariora um, shop. I oh, still, oh yeah, yeah. the old Peri, 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 Peri store and car, the cafe and bar. Oh man, I can't even speak English today. Man, too busy trying to read it fast and <laughs> speak it. Well, I'll throw the link up. Um, they are awesome guys. They're actually going to do dra dirt drags and shit again today by the sounds of it. So there'll be another video of that coming up shortly. So that's some cool, I love that sort of stuff. These are actually a, a car show over in inland from Melbourne, not that far um, in Australia. It's called Chop. It's friggin' apps. I would love to be in there. I was hoping to go there when I was in, it, in Tasmania. Um, yeah, it looks really, really cool. Same sort of thing. They go do dirt, dirt drag racing and and um, stuff, and it's all pre sixty five. Um, so it's all real cool stuff, and all the and it, well, basically your vehicle's got to be built pre sixty five style too. You know, um, no modern. Well, they I think they must let old things slip through, but no modern um, technology and stuff in the vehicles. If you know what I mean. It's all old school, sort of, you know, wheels and all that sort of stuff. There's no bullet stuff or anything like that, you know, or if it is, it's hidden. Um, so, yeah. So, cool. That's a cool, it's, um, it's quite a few videos on that. So, if you, if you want to go hunt that up too, but they're doing that sort of style of drag racing and stuff up north. Um, I'd love to see that some of that sort of stuff done here too. But anyway, we'll catch you later on. And, um, yeah. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.